Welcome back to Celtic Fans TV. It's time for reaction to Neil Lennon's appointment as the full-time Celtic manager. He signed a 12-month rolling contract just yesterday um, after the club announced after the cup final that um, they had offered him the job. So this is the first time myself and Ryan have had a chance to sit down um, and talk about it. So we apologise if we're going over any old ground. I know that you've all have been discussing this for more than a week now. Um, but first of all, we're going to start by looking at the board, how they've handled this whole process, the timing of the announcement, um, which is a big thing for people, obviously. Um, and then we'll come on to looking at Neil Lennon as the Celtic manager. We'll look at pros and cons um, of both sides um, and see where, where the club go from here. So, first of all, Ryan, we had barely even got the kit away at Hamden last Aye. Saturday. Um, and I got a phone call for one of my mates and he said they've given Neil Lennon a job. And I said, who told you that? Right. And he was like, it's on Twitter. And I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. Um, I think from talking to people and hearing other people's stories from Saturday, it kind of took the wind out of everybody's sails. And we thought we were going to the bus parade, we were going to celebrate a massive day for the club. Um, and no one expected the announcement to be made when it was made, half an hour after the cup final. So what does that tell you about how the board handled this process um, and what does it tell you about how they themselves feel about the appointment? If I can remove it from football and strictly business decisions, it stinks of sweeping mixed news under the carpet. That's what it looked like to me. If you were unveiling a big name signing or a big name manager someone coming into the club would it have been done on the cusp of a treble treble because what that would have done would take away some of the limelight from the decision mm -hmm. so it almost seems like the absolute reversal of that for me it almost seems like they knew there was going to be massive mixed response to it they knew that it was not the greatest business decision and they knew that they were having to do something to try and kind of merge that in with the success of what the treble treble, a phenomenal achievement by any measure, never be seen again, more than likely. And they seem to take delight in announcing Neil Lennon on the cusp of that, on the, the when we just delivered the treble treble, they threw Neil Lennon as the, the manager yeah. into the mix of it. Yeah, it all seemed very botched, I think. I've said the, the whole process, um, and this is not this part of the discussion is not about Neil Lennon. It's no. absolutely nothing to do with Neil Lennon. It's how the board have handled this process and how they've dealt with it over, say, the last 12 months since Rodgers was still here. Um, they, they probably knew this was coming since last August. Um, it all felt very rushed. I've, I've said from the beginning of it that if they don't know, if the board don't know that there's different opinions on whether Neil Lennon should get the job within the fan base, then they're negligent because they're so out of touch with where the fans are at. But I think it's much worse than that, and I think we've seen that this week, and I've heard um, a few other people comment that they feel that's the case as well, because Peter Lowell said it when he was asked about it at Hamden in the press conference. What about um, the fans' thoughts? There's obviously been some some critics about how the team have been playing and whether Neil Lennon's the right guy. And he finished off um, his defence of it by saying, that's irrelevant for us. So I think that is an affront to the supporters. I think they've handled it horrendously. I think it's a slap in the face for us. Um, I don't know who they thought they were fooling as well because nobody's really... It hasn't worked. It's not like we were on a high for winning the treble that we were just going to let it go and be like, oh aye, that is brilliant, great appointment and nobody was going to bat an eyelid. That hasn't happened. And I think now, even even I was reading this morning, that yesterday when they done the press conference, they sent the invite to the journalists out at 10 at 4 and the, the press conference started at 20 past 4. I don't understand the rationale behind that. Like, why, why are they still making it seem rushed, unorganised, it's, it just beggars belief that a, a business of this size that turned over more than £100 million last year 
number one, didn't do a recruitment process, and number two, have had an absolute PR disaster announcing it. So, the, take it away. Like you said, you've hit the nail on the head with it just stinks of gross negligence as a business that turns over £100 million, not even to go out to the market. You know well I worked in recruitment. In recruitment, if you want to appoint someone internally, you have to advertise a job publicly for a set amount of days, weeks, months, whatever it may be, depending on the level of the role. You have to you have to go to the market, you have to show that you've looked externally, even if you've earmarked a candidate. So if Celtic earmarked Neil Lennon as the man to take over that role, they have to do diligence. They have to go to the market and see what else is out there and give them the opportunity to present their thoughts on what they would do with the club, the team, and how they would take it forward. And then, even if they wanted to give it to Neil Lennon from the very start, do that. But at least do what you should be doing as a board running. A PLC. A, a PLC. A club, a business, whatever way you want to put it. Go to the market, let the market speak to you, and then make your decision. Even if the decision was already made, we still need to look at what's out there in the marketplace and see if there's anything that would be better for the club. You also mentioned that it, it just was like irrelevant what the customers, which we are, we're fans, right? But that business does not operate without us, period. Mm-hmm. If we stop going to the football, if we stop supporting that club, that business is shut. The same way that any other business in the world, I know football is totally different, but it is run as a business, especially at Celtic Park. Mm -hmm. They run it for the numbers. And I feel that if you look at any other business in the world and someone says at the top of that business that it's irrelevant what their customers, fans think, they're out of the game the next day, period. Or the person who was saying that is out of the business the next day because you just can't do that. I think the way the board have handled it has been horrible. I think that apart from the fact that I didn't believe Neil Lennon was the man that I thought was the best person that could take us forward, it doesn't matter. It's the way the board have handled it, the way they've portrayed themselves again and again and again. Um, Over the last 12 months, it's been pretty horrible. And this seems to have epitomised exactly where they think of or what they think of us as the fans. Mm. And I come back to it again. They haven't, like, this is not about Neil Lennon. I think no. people have a, a view that maybe I'm very critical of Neil Lennon, but, uh, like, I'm not, I, I love the guys, I've, I've said again and again. But even his appointment would have been much easier to take for a lot of fans, I think, if they had done a process and said, look, we've, we've spoke to a number of candidates. Neil Lennon's the best guy because of these qualities. He's been here before. He's done X, Y, and Z. He knows the city. He knows the city, aye. Um, <laughs> he knows the city and he knows the club. Um, hardly a glittering list of credentials. But again, that's that's the decision that they've made. And I just think the way they handled the whole thing was, was really poor. They got off, the board got off scot-free with the way they handled the last 12 months when Brendan Rodgers walked out the door because everybody's... Anger was directed at Brendan Rodgers, and rightly so in some ways, because he yep. did, at the drop of a hat, he walked away. We'll never know all the ins and outs that went on behind the scenes last summer, the John McGinn stuff, but the board got off scot-free and everybody directed their anger at Brendan Rodgers. And then you come, I, I don't know if I'm speaking for any, any other supporters, but I come full circle and I start believing in them again and I think surely they understand the size of this time for the club, how big this moment is in Celtic's history and I think I've got a wee feeling they will get somebody blockbuster, that they'll outdo themselves, um, they'll loosen the purse strings, open the biscuit tin whatever you call it and they'll go and get that A-list candidate and I don't know why because every time <laughs> they let you down, every so time it kills you. that's it um, so I'm astounded that they didn't do the, the as you say, uh, due diligence, a, a recruitment process, um, because that would have been much easier for the fans to take the announcement, even if they'd take, taken the time to wait until next week. Yep. Um, <laughs> announcing that you've offered them the job just seems very strange. I, I didn't get confirmed until yesterday, which is six days after. So Neil Lennon was able to go a wee holiday knowing that he was the only candidate that Celtic 
if it wasn't Neil Lennon and he didn't love the club, he could have been saying to his agent, Think we'll, get, else. we'll get a, an extra million pound out of this because the club have announced that I'm the guy and they're not going to talk to MD else. But they've only offered me it. It was just strange. It was, it was a remarkable sequence of events. I, I honestly couldn't believe it. I don't see why they couldn't have waited. Um, and we'll kind of wrap up this, this discussion about the board now. I just don't see why they couldn't have waited a couple of days and let us have, let us have the night. So what did we do in the pub? We went to the Gallagate, tried to see the bus parade. What did we talk about in the pub? The board. The appointment of Neil Lennon. The announcement. We, we didn't oh, talk what? about winning the treble. No. We, we, we did for a wee bit. It was brilliant. But it just took over the night. Yeah. Anyway, we'll move on <laughs> um, and talk about Neil Lennon. The Celtic manager, once again, after his four years in charge, the first time around. Um, we'll start with the positive stuff. We'll start with the pros. Um, I know we've just kind of had a, a wee joke about it. He does know the club. He absolutely loves the club. Um, he's served it brilliantly um, as a player and as a manager. He's won so many honours. Um, he's had to put up with unbelievable stuff off the field in his first spell as manager um, if there's anybody that understands how much this period means to Celtic um, it's surely Neil Lennon 100% 100% uh, when we look at Neil Lennon as a manager his first spell given that he'd just been a player and moved into a management position was not appalling. There's been many worse managers. Uh, Neil Lennon. It was good. He was good. He was good. And Neil Lennon is the man who understands, arguably understands Celtic the most. Mm-hmm. Even given that we could have went to the market and interviewed a number of managers, Neil Lennon gets it. Nobody would have understood Celtic no one, more. No one. So in that respect, Neil Lennon is a hundred percent the right man um, to understand what he's looking to achieve and know how much it means to every single one of us. So yeah, 100% agree. Obviously, you can debate all day how much weight being a Celtic man holds for the position, um, but there's no denying that that is up there in the list of Neil Lennon's credentials. He loves the club, he's been here, and he has won titles before. He knows what it takes as a player and, and as a manager. The other thing is, as, as Lowell touched on as well, he's a winner. You, you cannot disagree with that. Um, his win rate, as we've seen um, a lot of times this week, compared with Rogers, is very slightly better. Um, Rogers 69 point something and uh, Lennon's 70. He is a winner. Um, he's won titles. We've we done well in Europe the first time around. But as you say, to come from it being a player straight into being the Celtic manager was a big job for him, yeah. a massive job and he did do well but since then his managerial career hasn't taken the, the path that you, you would think it might if your first job was the Celtic manager where you done well you won titles, you got to the last 16 of the Champions League yeah. um, the two jobs that he's had since then haven't really um, kept his managerial career on upward trajectory um, but I mean, he's it's still he's going to win games. He's going to win a lot of games, yeah. and and that is something that we can rely on. Hundred percent. And Neil Lennon, we've seen since he's come in after Brendan Rodgers left, that he likes someone who is going to give the all every single game. Someone mm-hmm. who's going to go out there and graft his socks off. That isn't necessarily a bad thing when you see some of the lackluster games that we've had, and the past year or so getting people who are coming in and the fans we've been on the back of people like Scott Sinclair because he's just not going into the challenges or he's not putting himself about Neil Lennon likes that kind of player mm. well that appeases some of us to say well look, that guy is working his socks off and he's trying to do his bit Neil Lennon is that kind of guy he's a fighter he's somebody who like you said wants to win every single game that he possibly can and he'll do his utmost to make sure the players perform to that sort of expectation that they're going out there to win and work their absolute socks off. So in that respect, I think he will demand 
a lot for the players uh, and I think that can only be a good thing. Absolutely, in recruitment the other thing that Lowell touched on is his eye for a player. Again, if you go back and revisit his first spell in charge, there, there is a list of great players that came in who have went on to, I mean two of them will play in the Champions League final tonight. Um, there was also a long list of failed signings where does the responsibility lie? Was it John Park? Was it Neil Lennon? Like, you never know. Yep. We, he did sign some very good players, but I think more importantly for Celtic and the style of play that we've been used to, not that I expect us to continue playing the way we have been under the previous manager, but the style of player that we're used to. Um, I think there's certain qualities, as that's what you touched on there, there's qualities that Neil Lennon looks for above all others. And it's grit and effort and determination. And that's why we've seen Johnny Hayes feature so much more since since uh, Neil Lennon came back yep. for that uh, little interim spell there from February onwards. And I think that is a nod towards the, the kind of player, the mode of player that we're going to see more of in the team. Yep. I'm not saying we're going to have a team full of 11 Grafters, no, but it's something that we're going to see more of, isn't it? Hundred percent, without question. I think you and I had a kind of brief joke about it, but that kind of player is often coming from that Scottish mould because the Scottish game is quite fierce and aggressive and put yourself about and make it happen. So maybe you will see a couple of players coming in from the kind of bigger teams round about Scotland mm -hmm. coming in and starting to feature in Celtic and that is exactly what I think Lennon will look to start building around getting these players in that are willing to put themselves into the 50-50s players that are willing to go up and take a knock to try and win and try and get that ball and try and take possession I think that's exactly what we're looking for now Yeah definitely and I think the other thing when you think about Neil Lennon's team um, guys like Commons and Hooper and like very good footballers, not very good athletes. Yeah. Um, we obviously had the thing when Ronnie Dyler came in about revolutionising the diet. He thought the players weren't fit enough. Um, he was ridiculed to some extent because he was Ronnie Dyler. I, I think when Brendan Rodgers came in, he probably had done the same. He brought better sports science. He would have brought better nutrition, and that would have been that, an underpinning, like a foundation of everything that he'd done. I'd, I hope, obviously there's a lot of talk that Neil Lennon's not the biggest sports science guy. Um, he has touched on knowing his time, his interim spell, that he was blown away by how the clubs came forward um, in the background at the training ground, the resources they have there now. Um, and that that's something th the club should harness and really to help us kick on and go to the next level. So <laughs> that's something that I think is massive as well. Um, I don't want us to be going back to your Chris Commons and your Gary Hoopers, not not those guys specifically. Yeah, um, that kind of athlete. That kind of athlete. Yeah, good footballers, but limited because they're not in the best shape they could be in. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. I might be a mile out there, but I, I just don't want that sort of situation to arise. One of the things that that I would touch on there is. As a manager coming into a club where you've never experienced that level of, for want of a better word, professionalism, where mm -hmm. you come in and there's a solid structure there for sports science and development and strength and condition, all these maybe guys that Neil Lennon's never had within his resources, then does that require someone to inform of how all that best works within a team, with how, how you make that football? how you create football out of that structure and how you make it more like based on an athlete and how you develop an athlete rather than just how you make a good footballer. That's one of the things that I would be thinking, like, I hope he's picked that up quickly. I hope he knows that if the sports science guy leaves, then we get someone else in and we can replace that and make it as good, if not better, because we're always looking to progress the team, the athletes that we have in the team. The young guys coming through, it's massive for them to understand what club they're part of and how professional football works and how you become the best athlete you possibly can. That's one of the things that I would wonder if Neil Lennon's coming in and saying, well, how amazing is this? Mm -hmm. Well, if you've not experienced it before, how do you work it best? Yeah, yeah. I think 
as well, the, again, the, of all the, the criticisms and the, the stuff that we've seen since he's been in charge, there was the, the trip to Dublin that the players yep. supposedly had after they won the league, um, followed by an insipid performance at Ibrox. Yep. Um, and when you hear guys talk, um, like you hear the boys not go who have worked under Neil Lennon before, um, they get on really well with them. He, he look like he'll, he'll let when there's successes happen, he'll let them go and celebrate it. Um, but obviously, it's just about getting that balance right. And as you say, the professionalism um, being absolutely paramount and, and and using all of that top level stuff. Yeah. Um, because I think in some ways Neil Lennon is in some ways old fashioned. Um, I don't want to 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 just ban them as old fashioned, but I think. When you think about Martin O'Neill, who he spent most of his career under, Martin O'Neill was a very old-fashioned manager un- under um, Brian Clough at Nottingham Forest. And even you hear again, you hear the stories for the guys that played with him about not really taking part in training. He let um, John Robertson and Steve Walford take the training. Um, even the way he would come in and announce the team, just read out 11 names, and they would have to go and ask Steve Walford, what was the formation, where am I playing? Stuff like that, I think wee things like that are like nods to a sort of bygone era that football is moving, it's moving a lot more into strategy and tactics and, and all of this stuff, yep. um, the elite level of it. And I think um, when Neil Lennon has spent a lot of his career doing something one way that has worked, yep. um, I think that's, that's why he's, he's built much of his managerial style on that um, but I think now when you look at Martin O'Neill who's not done great in his last few jobs I think that's because football is moving on as a sport yep. um, so I think we just have to, to make the absolute best of that but Pierre Lovell touched on they're talking about the head of recruitment a new head of recruitment because obviously we don't have one at the minute um, although Neil Lennon has been looking at players since he came in again I don't know what that tells you but well, they always knew he was going to get. Uh, they were going to give him the job, but that's a decision that has to be made. John Park is a name that he was going to go to Sunderland. I don't think he's went to Sunderland. Yep. Um, and the theme, the way the the club have ran this, it wouldn't surprise you that if we went back to John Park, um, and we'll just go back to twenty twelve. Yep. <laughs> um, but there was talk about the director of football as well. Don't expect that to happen now, do you? When you no. Can, no. Absolutely not. That's absolutely not going to happen. That's not a thing that Celtic are looking at doing at the minute. I think realistically, when you look at the decision that's been made, as a business, again, football club, which we we are both, uh, very firmly both, that to go back and bring the person who led the club seven years ago and look to take the club forward when you've touched on it, that he hasn't really done anything that's progressed from what he did at Celtic. Mm. Actually, he's regressed, if you look at it. He's never went to the same sort of level, which means, to me personally, that he's not developed the level of experience that you would like to see taking Celtic forward. Mm. And in that respect as well, Celtic are obviously quite happy at a board level to just keep going, keep marching on as well as they can with as limited a budget as they possibly can and that's just glaringly obvious Absolutely. it just has to be we get behind Neil Lennon 100% he's now the Celtic manager uh, we stand behind him, we support him and hope that uh, he does if not as good a job as the last time, much better absolutely, 100% look that's that is the takeaway here I don't want everybody to be jumping on the comments and saying oh look forget about it as I say this is the first time we've had a chance to sit down and yep. talk about it Forget about it. Just back him. All that stuff. We will back him 100%. to the hill. Um, and as soon as pre-season starts, as soon as this discussion's finished, actually, we're right Start. behind him. Yeah. We're absolutely right behind him. But this is the time to talk about it. Um, I know we had the announcement and then we've had a week to, to chew over it. Um, but it did only get confirmed yesterday. So this is the time to talk about it. Talk about how the club have handled it. Um, and look forward to Neil Lennon as the Celtic manager. That's it. Um, we will be back in the close season, po- possibly next week, to talk about 
um, who's staying, who's going, um, and look at the squad, who we're going to lose and who should come in, what areas we need to strengthen as well, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Don't forget to like this video, comment with your own thoughts below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and check out the new trailer if you haven't seen it. Um, we'll link it up at the end of the video. Thank you.